few things are as frustrating as working with a stubborn horse. Today, I just wanted to share some exercises I've learned along the way that I found really helpful when it comes to working with stubborn horses. The exercises I'm gonna share can help a wide range of horses, not just stubborn horses. So this video may apply to you and your situation as well. The first exercise I wanna talk about is an exercise that will address those horses that like to stop and plant their feet rather than lead on when you're leading or riding them. So with all these exercises, I'm gonna address the problem on the ground first and then I'll show you what you can do in the saddle. So for this problem, the horse is planting their feet and they don't wanna move forward. So I know I've had horses do this, like maybe they don't wanna go into the arena and so they'll plant their feet and they just won't go or maybe they don't wanna go into the barn or something like that so they'll, they'll just refuse to move. This can also be if you're on your horse as well. There's a few different steps I go through to try and get my horse moving forward at this point. The first step on the ground would be, number one, I wanna make sure I'm maintaining that leader position and role. So when you're leading your horse, you're facing forward and you're right here. So when your horse stops and doesn't wanna go forward, you need to maintain this position to communicate to the horse you wanna go forward. A lot of times the horse will stop and the handler suddenly gets like this and they're pulling on the horse like this, but in reality, my body language isn't communicating to the horse to walk forward because I'm facing this other way. So if I stay here facing forward, I'm gonna to communicate to my horse I want to go forward. So once I'm facing forward and asking my horse to move forward, if they're still refusing to do so, what I'm going to do is take my lead rope and I'm gonna start applying pressure for them to move forward. And I can even kind of walk into this as well. You always wanna start with the lightest pressure because that way the horse learns to respond to the lightest pressure. So initially, if my horse is refusing to move, I'll apply light pressure. You just saw him respond to the light pressure. He kind of leans into it. If he doesn't respond to the light pressure, I'll apply a gradual medium pressure and from there I'll go to a hard pressure. At this point, if your horse is stubborn, they're still just gonna be like, nope, I'm not moving. So what I personally do at this point that I find useful is I take the lead rope or the halter up here more and I'm gonna start weaving the horse's head back and forth. And this is gonna just, number one, it throws them off balance so it makes them have to take a step. So once I do this and the horse takes a step, I can reward, because then they learn that that's what I wanted. So I'll, I'll reward by immediately releasing the pressure. So I'll just show you again. I take the halter, and I'm just gonna move their head left and right, and also go forward, and that's gonna get them to step forward as well. So if all else fails, we're gonna go get a lunge whip. This isn't to smack the horse. I'm actually gonna show you how you can use this to get your horse moving forward. So now I'm adding my lunge whip to the equation. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna still maintain my forward position to where I'm facing forward, asking my horse to walk forward. And I can even wiggle their head back and forth like I talked about earlier. At this point, if they're not doing it, I'm just gonna take my lunge whip and I'm gonna start tapping the ground next to my horse. Some horses, as soon as you get the lunge whip, they know you mean business, they'll move forward. Other horses, they're still just gonna stand there. This is another thing where you're gonna start with a light pressure of just waving it. Then I'll go medium. Then if my horse is really stubborn, I'm really gonna wave this and get them to where they're gonna move forward. Once again, I just wanna remind you guys and place emphasis on releasing pressure. So releasing pressure is the reward to the horse to let them know that they did the right thing. So as soon as your horse goes and takes the step, that's when you should release the pressure and reward. And as you work with your horse, you know, you can look for an answer of more steps before you reward. So initially, I'm just trying to get him to move a step, right? But after a while, I want him to walk with me all the way to where I'm going. And so once I get to where I'm going, then I can reward him for walking with me. The great news is the same principles apply under saddle if you're on your horse and your horse doesn't want to move forward. So all you're going to do, make sure your hands are forward, you're not pulling on your horse's mouth, because a lot of times I see riders and their horse isn't moving forward and they're wondering why, but they're pulling back on the reins. So number one, make sure you're, you got slack in your reins. Number two, you're gonna apply pressure with your legs. So you'll start with light pressure. If the horse doesn't move forward, I'm gonna go to medium pressure. And then if they still don't respond, you know, you can give them a little kick and like encourage them with your seat and move your hips. If all else fails, if they're not wanting to move forward, I find it's a lot easier to get them to step forward with the weaving I'll just wave their head back and forth 
And I, you can even try to get their hind end moving. So I can weave to the point where like, he at least has to take a step that way. And so all I'm doing is bringing my hand back to my knee and kicking with this leg, I'll show you guys this way, so that he has to step. Even if he isn't stepping forward initially, I want to get him to step. So once again, I'll show you, if I'm weaving this way, I'm kicking with this leg and bringing this rein back to my hip. And so at that point, once your horse takes a step, I'll release and I'll reward them and they can just stand there. And then I'll try again. I'll ask if they don't respond, I'll start weaving. So the next exercise addresses horses that always want to be getting in your space and kind of pushing you around. This is a very broad subject because there's many ways you can come about correcting this. I just want to start with something super simple today that I find is the easiest place to start with correcting this behavior. So I'm going to set a scenario for you guys and see what your horses do. So sometimes I'll be in the barn and I'll be leading Tucker out to go for a ride and suddenly I run into my friend and we stop and talk for a little bit. Well, Tucker over here, he doesn't want to ride around. So he will butt me with his head, he'll bump into me, and he'll just be moving around and getting impatient. This behavior is understandable. I mean, no one likes to just stand still for a long time, but it doesn't mean that the horse should be crowding you and hitting you and trying to push you forward. They're just too big to do that, right? A thousand pound animals need to be aware of their size and what they're doing when they are around a hundred pound humans. So I thought this was a great example on where to start with correcting this behavior. So with this exercise, all you're gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna stand kind of in front of my horse, but off to the side. I don't wanna be directly in front of them. And once again, this goes to body language. My body language is communicating that I wanna stay here because I'm not facing that way, right? Because if I wanted the horse to move forward, I'd be right here facing this way. But I'm facing this way, I'm telling my horse, I'm staying here. Well, he's inching forward, back up. So I'm just gonna have him back up to his spot. So this is basically the exercise and all you're doing is you're just going to correct your horse when they step towards you because really I'm just communicating to him to stay there. So the way you're going to correct them is when they step forward, you're just going to shake your rope and this is going to tell them to back up. Same thing with the pressure and release. You want to start light so they learn at the lightest pressure but increase if you need to. If he steps forward, I'll shake my rope lightly to tell him to step back. He's not responding, so I'll move to a medium pressure, and there he responds. So with some horses, you know, you'll start light, you'll go to medium, and then you're really gonna have to wave your arm to get them to back up. But this way he's just learning, this is my space, you're not gonna rush me. And after a while of doing this exercise, I realized like the horses just learn to relax so instead of like me stopping and talking to my friend and the horse just wants to move around and bump into me, now when I stop and talk to my friend, my horse just will go to sleep. This is a really good exercise to help your horse just start to understand the concept of boundaries and personal space and things like that. I have an online course that walks you step by step through other really helpful groundwork exercises that's really gonna go a long way in teaching your horse to respect your personal space. The lessons are set up so that each lesson you learn a new groundwork exercise and then how you can go and apply it with your own horse. So you can go to shop.equinehelper.com which will also be in the description that you can click to go check out that course. So while this may not seem like it relates under saddle because your horse can't really crowd you if you're on them, one way this behavior can transfer to under saddle is if you're just standing, sitting on your horse, just wanting them to stand still, but they want to inch forward and they want to move around instead of like just standing and relaxing. So one thing you can do, he's standing pretty nicely here. You wanna make sure you're standing on loose reins. Because a lot of times we actually teach our horses that the only way for them to stand still is if we have our reins tight. But I want him on loose reins. So I'll start on loose reins. And if he goes to move forward, all I'm going to do is bring his head back to my knee. So this is called a one rein stop. And I'll just walk you guys through it real quick. I'm going to bring my hand down my rein, bring my horse's head back to my knee by bringing my hand to my hip. That's all I'm gonna do because I don't wanna encourage him with my leg, so I'm just gonna leave my leg there. But that's gonna keep him from moving forward. This is called the one rein stop. And so every time he goes to move, I'll just bring his head back. He may just walk in a tight circle for a while, but once the horse stops, you can release and go back to just standing still. Some horses 
As soon as they come to a stop and you release their head initially, they want to move forward again. So all you can do while you practice this is bring your horse's head back to your knee. That's going to just teach them that they can't just walk off. How many of you have a horse that doesn't like to be taken or ridden away from their buddy in the pasture or the barn? Some horses may be like this just because they're lazy and they don't want to be worked. The majority of the time horses are actually like this because they don't feel confident or comfortable away from their normal settings. You really do want to build that trust in between you and your horse so that they can trust you to take them away. But here's just one exercise on how you can do that. Let's say my horse is barn sour. So that means they always want to go back to the barn, but I want to start getting them used to riding away from the barn and out in the pasture and out on the trail ride. First, I'm going to take them on the ground and I'm going to take them to an area that's slightly out of their comfort zone away from the barn. And so I'll just lead them over there. I'll lead them to that area so they can see it, see how they're going to act. Um, if I get over there and they're acting kind of silly, I can do groundwork. I can lunge them. Trot, trot, trot. And I can do just some other really basic groundwork exercises that's just going to get them to focus on me instead of focusing on where the barn is, right? You have to remember that this isn't something where I'm just trying to work my horse and make them tired and make them behave. Because if you do that away from the barn and they want to go back to the barn, you're just reaffirming their thought of like, the barn is a place of safety, the barn is a place of rest. So all I'm trying to do in this instance is just direct my horse's attention to an exercise rather than where the barn is or where their buddy is. So once you've gone out to your area on the ground, you've shown your horse the area, you've done some groundwork, so now the horse is familiar and comfortable with that spot, now you can ride over there. And you can just ride around, you know, nothing too crazy. Something I personally like to do in getting horses comfortable with being ridden away from their buddy or the barn or something is I like to end my ride at that spot and dismount at that spot. Because the reason horses like the barn is because they learn that at the barn they don't have to do any work. At the barn is where you dismount and get off and they're done with their ride. So if I can show them that the spot away from the barn is where I dismount and they get done with their ride, they're going to learn to positively associate that area a lot more. So after I've ridden my horse around and you know you can go to other places, you can go to the arena, just come back to that spot and get off. I've done my riding, I've come back to the spot, now I'll just dismount and lead my horse back to the barn from here. So probably the most common problem that people have with stubborn horses is picking up their horse's feet. Just a disclaimer, there's a lot of reasons that horses may have difficulty picking up their feet. Some of them may be in pain, others may just have a hard time staying balanced. So it's important to rule out those problems before just assuming your horse is being stubborn. But if your horse is being stubborn, here is how you can address this issue. So if you have a horse that doesn't like their foot picked up or maybe they pull their foot away from you once you get it up, here are some things you can do. We're gonna use pressure and release to solve this as well, where we're gonna start with a light pressure and then gradually increase the pressure to medium and a hard pressure so that they'll pick up their foot. So I'll just pinch the tendon here just so you can see my hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just pinching with a light pressure to ask my horse to pick up their feet. The reason I'm doing this is as I mentioned earlier, I want the horse to learn to respond to the lightest pressure. So there he goes, right? Another thing you can do with this, because we really just want to encourage the horse to pick up its foot, is you can also just kind of lean into the horse's shoulder and that's going to make them shift their weight to the other leg so that will be easier for them to pick up this foot. So if your horse doesn't initially want to pick up their hoof with the light pressure, you can increase to a medium pressure Hold that for a few seconds. If they don't respond, increase to a harder pressure, all the while leaning into the shoulder to encourage them to shift their weight to that other leg. If your horse is really stubborn about this, another thing you can do is get a second person to hold the horse's head and tilt their nose towards you while you pick up the foot. Because once again, this is really just going to make them have to balance on that opposite leg. And so it's gonna be a lot easier to pick up this foot when their head is tilted to you. So as soon as the horse picks up the foot, you want to release and reward them so they know that that is what you want. Sometimes with stubborn horses, all they have to learn is that they're gonna get rewarded for them to change their mindset, right? So as soon as the horse picks up their foot initially, I can release. Even if he just kind of picks up his heel or shifts his weight to that other leg, I'll just let him figure it out, right? 
So then gradually I'll just hold the hoof and then I'll put it back down and increase the time that that hoof is up in the air. If you have a horse that, that likes to pull their hoof away from you, once you have it up, there's a few things you can do. Number one is just a quick fix where if you grab their toe and just tilt it more to you and tilt it up, for whatever reason that keeps them from pulling it out of your hand and it keeps them from really just getting the power behind it to pull it away. So that's just a quick fix for that, but here's how you wanna to respond to it. So. Let's say if he pulls his foot out of my hand and puts his hoof down, I want to immediately go back to pick it up. So I'll immediately pick it up and then just put it back down before he can pull it away again, just so it's kind of like I get the final word. So maybe, yes, he did pull his hoof away from me, but I'm getting the final word and that you need to pick it up again and I put it down, not you. So one of the things I've personally found the most helpful when it comes to dealing with stubborn horses is just routine groundwork with them. Routine groundwork helps the horse get to know you on a face-to-face -face level so that they can learn to trust you and learn to want to be with you, but it also helps just establish your boundaries and build the respect of your horse learns where your personal bubble is and learns that you can't just be run over. So once again, my online course walks you through really useful groundwork exercises that's gonna help you establish a relationship with your horse, but also establish your boundaries. You can go to shop.equinehelper.com or click the link in the description to learn more. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos.